What's going on YouTube? Um, I wanted to make a video to share my experience of owning a 2004 Mazda RX-8 for close to 15 years now. I know the platform is getting a lot of uh, attention lately, especially with everything being electrified and people are coming around to understand just how good the chassis is. By no means is a, has the fame and prestige of a Mazda RX-7, but this is a good car. It has its pros and cons just like any other car. And I've seen a lot of videos over the past two years of people saying, my ownership experience of, old, of having an RX-8 for six months, for a year, but there's never been truly a long-term review um, of this car so I haven't owned this car I haven't owned this car for 15 years um, I thought I'd give my feedback maybe it'll help someone out there who's considering buying a car or just provide some education uh, for folks to to get more familiar with the platform so I'll start a little bit going to the background of the car when I purchased it some of the modifications some of the things that went that have gone bad um, and just overall my experience. Okay, so to start, I bought this car in 2008 for, uh, for um, 2008 with, I think it was 16,000 miles on it. So I'm the second owner, it is a 2004. So while I've owned it for 15 years, the car's 19 years old, wow. And I date, this was my daily from 2008 all the way to 2016. That was my daily. I went to work and back uh, Monday through Friday and um, use it on the weekends. I live uh, somewhere where it gets cold in the Northeast, so it was never a garage kept in the, for the winter. Um, so she was out every season, every day. So some of the details are for the commute. Uh, the commute was from 2008 all the way to 2016 or so. I'm gonna try to give you a high level of kind of like the miles that I put on the car. The car currently has 111,324 uh, miles, uh, but set up at around 16. My commute was 72 miles uh, altogether to and from work. Uh, so we're talking about like 360 miles per week, close to 1,400 miles per month. Uh, the car, like I said, the, the commute was not a straight old highway. There was a lot of back and forth, you know, bumper to bumper traffic as it is custom here in the Northeast. Um, and uh, she definitely put in her time, drove, like I said, in the snow, in the summer, in the winter. And um, for that, she's been good. She's been great. She definitely did her job. Now, I'm not, some of the pros and cons of this car or some of the experience that I have with this car, um, I would say just kind of go over the general maintenance, what I've kind of been doing, what I did over the years. I know there's a lot of debates, what kind of oils to use, I'm not here to tell you what oil to use. I'm gonna tell you what I've used <clears throat> and what I've been doing um, now. So from, I'm going mileage, from 16,000 miles to close to, I would say about 60,000 miles, if I remember, you know, 60,000 miles, the only, issue I had was my the nipple on the stock radiator broke. Those who have RXAs are familiar with that. So then from there, I just naturally upgraded to the Koyo Rad um, radiator. That was the only issue I had with this car up to like around 60,000 miles. The engine started up every day, never gave me any issues. Never did not start all the way from 16,000 to about 60,000 miles. Um, it just worked flawlessly, to be honest. And I wasn't kind to it. I, I drove the car hard. 
I drove it in traffic, I, I revved it, maybe that's kind of why the car, you know, never had any issues. Um, but we'll get into that a little later. Now, some of the oil, we'll go into oil later, what, what I've used here. Um, the general maintenance, around 70,000 miles. And you gotta remember, when I bought this car back in the time, back in the quote unquote day, there wasn't like a lot of information on this car like on YouTube. Right now you could YouTube whatever you want and you somebody done it and put a video. But back then, um, you had to go to the forums. And I, I say everybody who's familiar with forums, there's a lot of back and forth there. Everybody has an opinion. So you kind of had to experiment for, you, for yourself and see what works for you. So I decided to experiment around like 70,000 miles to see foam the car. Was it the right thing to do, not to do? I don't know. I can't tell you that it is. Um, but I, at the time, you know, I was getting familiar with cars. Cleans the engine. Let me clean the inside of the, the, the rotary engine. So let me see foam the car. That was around like 70,000 miles. I did that. Not because the car was acting funny. It was not acting funny. It wasn't giving me any issues. I just wanted to do quote unquote prep, you know, prevent any future issues. So I see foam the car. Um, I did that around 70,000 miles. What other maintenance I did, I also, I changed the coils around 90,000 miles. Again, not because the car was acting up. It, I, then I started getting more and more information about, um, around, you know, now I'm gonna have the car close to around like 80, 90,000 miles, and, you know, years are passing, there's more information available about the RX-8. You gotta remember back then, a lot of people, had to, a lot of, not a lot of people own this car. And information saying, hey, the, the coils are going out at around 100,000 miles. So I was like, all right, let me upgrade the coils not upgrade, uh, change them. I replaced them with the OEM coils. Uh, did not upgrade them with the BHR things, Black Halo Racing, Ignition. Um, the only thing I did was I changed, when I was updating, when I was, sorry, when I was changing the coils, I used OEM spec coils, and then I upgraded to, or upgraded, to the spark plug wires from Racing B, which kind of look, and that's been the original spark plugs wires that I've had since around 80,000 miles. The car has around 111,000, so there you, I'll let you do the math there. Um, and I changed the spark plugs there. Again, no issues. I will say that when I changed the coils around like 80, 90,000 miles, I do remember seeing the back of them being a little white. Uh, not only sure if it means anything, it could be just heat from the engine coming up. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of like when I changed the coils on, on this car and the spark plugs. I remember that. Uh, I did around that same time, I cleaned the second shutter, shutter valve SSV. Uh, I'll, there's videos on it. You can look it up. Um, it was, it was a little, uh, a lot of grease there. Um, but it wasn't because anything was wrong. Again, I've been very meticulous with the car, not out of fear that's gonna break, but just out of love. I mean, I I, I love this car. Uh, this was my first car that I bought, um, and it's made me an amazing. It's made me into a great driver. You know, the track. Um, not to brag or anything, but you know, uh, it's been a fun trip. I've been good. Been developing as a driver with this car. Um, so. All, everything that I did to it was out of just basically love for the car and I just love playing with it and, and, and learn on it. So I cleaned that around like 80, like the same time, like 80, 90,000 miles for the second shuttle valve. Again, no issues with the engine at this point. I'm not getting difficulty starting the car. I'm not, there's no uh, issues with low compression or rough idle. I mean, I never, hardly ever got it check engine light. If I ever got a check engine light, I do remember it was because of the, the fuel cap. Um, but aside from that, um, no issues. Again, at this point, everything's completely stock. Uh, the catalytic converter stock, the cap back is all stock. 
this is stock. The only thing that changes is the radiator and the steel brake lines. Those are the only two things that I've changed at the time. Okay, now, in terms of oils that I used, from 2008 all the way to, I would say, car has 111,000 miles on it, I was, yeah, to like 110,000 to 109, which I kind of parked it around 109, 110, because um, I got married, but we'll go to that. I use 5W20 conventional. I did not use the synthetic. I never pre-mixed the car ever, ever. Um, even when I went to the track, I used to 5W20. Uh, at the time and um, I've never had any issues. I will say though I changed oil every 3,000 miles um, I guess That's kind of like what I was told to do by my father. So I just did it. Remember I got this car very young um, So I did change the oil every 3,000 miles all those miles, all those years um, And I used 5w20 conventional Valvoline 5w20 uh, conventional non-synthetic and I've never had any issues with the car whatsoever. Now, fast forward to, let's see here, take a look, okay, first pre-mix, no pre, I never pre-mix, yep. Close call, okay, modifications, we'll go into modifications. So now, the, now it's now close to 2015, 2016. Now the car is not, be, I'm not driving as much and I'm getting married now, <laughs> you know how that is. And um, <clears throat> the car is kind of sitting in the garage now. So I started experimenting with it. And I, and I did take it to the track, um, I think a couple of years back, around 2014, 2014. Um, and I just want to say this because I need people to understand that this, these engines are not as bad as everybody make them out to be. This car, I um, I left the, the license plate here, and I took the car, and I had the stock airbox here. Everything was covered, and I think at the time, actually, I had the, the stock radiator. Um, I'm sorry if I'm getting my dates mixed up. It's, it's been a long time, um, but I, I, and again, I apologize for the format. I am not a YouTuber. I just wanted to share my experience with this car. And I do remember that I had the stock radiator. I had the license through here and it was like 90 degrees. And I went to the track and I kid you not, this, the engine got so hot that it was steaming. Not, it was like, it was almost like steaming. Like it was like, like white smoke was coming all around it. Um, I was th at the time, I think it was like the grease being burnt off. I don't know, but it definitely overheated. And still never had any issues with it. Still started up after that, went home, used it for years again. Um, but I just wanted to, I know I kind of jumped up, jumped a little bit, but I wanted to share that with you. Because uh, people always say these cars are like extremely unreliable and they're taking time bonds. I've never had any issues with this car, 111,000. I'm still on the original motor. Um, so, you you take that with how you how you want to. I just thought I should have with with everyone. Um, so now, so now fast forward to today. Um, I will say that the car now sitting at one hundred eleven thousand miles. Now I'm going to go into a little bit of the modifications that I've had uh, in plans for the car. I've never pre mixed ever, and I went to the track. I think was. Um, that's year around September. And, uh, and and I'll get into this colder intake in a bit. I, I installed this not because I thought it was gonna give me horsepower, <laughs> not at all. I installed it because I wanted to make sure I had enough airflow here um, to so that the engine didn't overheat. So I was trying to create some sort of airflow, right? Which is why I kind of removed this little black cover here and just left this all open. And I will say that after doing that, my engine temps are just been great. 
never had any issues anymore after that. Not that I had before, but you know, I was afraid to go in 80 degree weather and go to the track, you know, around May, June, uh, July. But now with this setup, I'm pretty comfortable doing that. Um, so after installing this, this here at the track, uh, the issue that I did run into the track um, was when you take hard left, when you take a hard high G turn, left turn, the fuel goes to the opposite side of the fuel tank, causing fuel starvation. Um, since then, um, there's been a couple recalls on this car. That's one thing this car's had is recalls, but nothing that I ever had to pay for. Um, and I think they replaced the, they, they replaced the fuel pump because uh, the, the refuel pump housing, they were, sort of was like leaking, but I think they just uh, replaced the, no, they did replace the whole thing because everything was brand new. Um, but it was a recall for some sort of fuel pump, fuel pump leakage, uh, and they replaced that. I still haven't, but when I go to the track, I drive it on full. I don't, I don't take chances and, and try to, you know, see how low I can get before I get fuel starvation to see if that problem went away. So now I just keep it at fuel. Um, in terms of recalls, I, I had the clutch pedal replaced by the recall. Everybody's familiar with that. I had the two front um, control arms, bottom control arms replaced. And I think that's it. Um, but this car doesn't have any outstanding recalls on it. Uh, so that. Now in terms of pre-mixing. When I pre-mixed for the first time, Sorry, let me back up a little bit. And again, I apologize. I have no format. I'm just sharing. So you feel free to sit through this if you want. When um, when I decided, I made a call to, to try conventional, to, to switch from conventional to synthetic now that I was going to the track. But before I did that, I took the Valvoline 5W20 and the, it was Royal Purple, Royal Purple 5W20 synthetic and I put them in like those little muffin oven crates and I basically set them on fire to see you know if this residue that people talk about really gets stuck in the housing or the apex and creates these issues um, affecting the engine with the conventional oil right uh, so I set them both on fire and sure enough when you heat up the conventional oil the 5W20 versus the synthetic, or well, at the time, Royal Purple, 5W20. The 5W, the Royal Purple burnt very clean, and the conventional left like a sluggish, like a little grime uh, behind. Uh, that was, and it, it, it just burned very dirty. That's when I decided to switch to synthetic. Again, I'm not saying you should, I'm just saying what I decided to do now. So I switched to synthetic, and um, I switched to, to now I'm going to the track, I switched to 5W30. Now, the guys from, I don't know if you're familiar, but this, uh, this is a YouTuber called 8 Lean, 8 Lean, something like that, 8 Lean RX8. Um, I was able to get in contact with him. He's based out of Japan. He has one of the fastest RX8s in the, in the world, I would say. I mean, the guy's a naturally aspirated original engine. The guy runs like 59 seconds at a, to Suba, to Suba, to Suba, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, and I was able to message him and ask him what kind of oil he used. And he uses 0W30 to go to the track. Uh, I'm not saying you should. What oil to use, I'm just telling you what the guy who competes in, in, in the Time Attack series in Japan use. So that kind of helped me make, you know, if he's using 0W30, I'll use 5W30. Now, which kind of oil is up to you? I will recommend that you go to Project, uh, if you Google, if you go to YouTube and go to a Project Farm. Um, he does a great comparison between best oil, just put top oil Project Farm, in which basically Enz oil and Penn's oil, full synthetic platinum are like the top two amongst the whole competition of what the best oil is. I switched to 5W30. 30 pens oil, full synthetic platinum uh, to go to the track uh, for this car. So we'll see how that goes.
but that's currently what I'm using on this car. Now, in terms of pre-mixing, I, like I said, I, I'm sorry to go back to it. I never pre-mixed um, all these years, but I said, you know what? Let me give it a shot. Let me let, let me let me see what happens. Uh, before I pre-mix and before I, you know, I want to say before I switch to all these synthetic oils, um, the car showed good compression. It did show good compression. Uh, never had an issue starting up. And um, when you and you switch and when you switch from second to third, um, or you kick in second, you still get that little bit of will, a little you know, a little burnt, little mini burn. So it tells me there's still a little power there. Um, and so the baseline is the car still healthy. So I pre-mix, but I decided to pre-mix with Ants Oil Racing Two Stroke Engine Oil, Two Stroke Racing engine oil why again I did a little bit of homework find out which was the best two-stroke oil look at Google that on your own again I'm not saying you should I'm just telling you what I've used I know there's um, another a Demisu he's a Misu something like that I apologize if I'm chopping it um, that you can use but I've decided to go on M's oil I will say that there was some folks out of Australia who did a test where they put gasoline, uh, where they mixed gasoline with the Rotary Edimitsu premix oil, and um, it, it kind of settled. It didn't really mix well, um, which will go to my next point. So now I have, I put four ounces on a full tank of gas um, on the car. And this thing was just spitting flames like at the track. It was cool. Um, I did feel like it had a little more, uh, little not say more power, but it felt a little more, a little aggressive, a little more aggressive. Um, but I did, but at the high RPM, at the low RPM, it, it was still a little, it felt a little slower than what I'm used to. And that was the first time I was also using this cold air intake, which, um, I don't think it's doing the job. And in fact, I'm sure it's not doing the job because uh, I, I, I did a little bit of research on it. So anyway, so I used the premix. Um, at the high RPM, it was great. It felt a little more aggressive. Like I said, it was spitting flames in the back. And at this point, I have a Racing B resonated mid pipe and a Racing B race exhaust. So it just... <laughs> It just goes, and it just spits flames um, at the track. Again, this car doesn't get used at daily anymore, um, but but uh, <clears throat> but it's, it's a lot. It's, it mostly goes to track now. Um, so, anyways, so it's all good at the track. Um, didn't have any issues starting up or, or, or you know start the car up after a session. Engine temperatures were great, no issues. But I will say that I kind of let the car. After coming back from the track, I let the car, I drove the car around, and I let the gas go all the way down to E. And when I did that, I believe that some of that oil kind of settled in at the bottom. And the reason I say that was because I do remember that I added more than four ounces as the day went on, because I was adding fuel to make sure the gas tank was full, so I would add more Premix. Now, I'm sure I got the ratio wrong because I never did it um, uh, before. But anyways, I think I might have added too much. I don't know. But after I let the car, the gas go to E, came back, set it set outside for a while. I think it was like a, a couple days, like a week. Um, I went to start the car, and sure enough, it, it gave me a misfire. Um it started like boo 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 boo, and I and I kind of felt like something was was had to do with the fact that uh, I might have had too much oil in the car, so I went and uh, I mean the gas tank. So then I went and put fuel. The engine started running. After a while, I kind of cleaned itself out, and it worked perfectly fine. Not sure what happened there, um, but now the car just starts perfectly fine after I filled it up to full again with without pre mixing. So no pre-mixing. 
it's just 93 um, octane gas. And I would say that I would add, I've always used top clean fuel. This car, from the time that I owned it to 2015, saw uh, BP 93, the one invigorate, I think it was, the one that cleans the engine. Uh, that's all I used on this car. And then now it uses, uh, I put in the Shell Nitro Plus, I think, 93 octane, which kind of helps clean the engine. So it's always had good fuel. And oil changes every 3,000 miles, which probably explains why I've never had an issue with the car. Um, so that's my experience with pre-mixing. I'm going to try again uh, this upcoming season. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'm probably just going to do four ounces and that's it. I'm not going to play around with the ratios. I'm just going to full tank of gas, four ounces, and keep the gas at full. Tank at full from there and have fun. I try not to overthink it so much because, as you know, the engine is full of people telling you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. So I'm just doing what works for me. Now, in terms of the cold air intake, <clears throat> I had a suspicion that this car um, was losing, lost a little bit of that low end power. I, I couldn't pinpoint it, but I just felt, I mean, I've driven this car for years, so I kind of know how it behaves. And um, sure enough, uh, I, I looked up how that, you know, what the effects of in updating or changing the intake was to the RX-8. And my suspicions were confirmed that when you do that, when you get rid of this uh, resonator section here, you kind of lose some of that low end power. And remember, this car is super sensitive. It barely has any power. You're not going to be anybody uh, in a drag race with this car. So any every horsepower matters. Uh, and, and the reason I'm, I can say that is because if you Google through my little research, if you go to YouTube and you click and you put um, Mighty Car Mods Cold Air Intake Mythbusters, for whatever reason, the host was essentially dialing and checking if the cold air intakes work on an S2000. But for whatever reason, around the two minute and 30 minute mark, he decides to ask the whole tech dyno person there about RX-8s. And he asked the RX-8 that, is it true? And this is a video that was loaded like eight years ago. Is it true? You can look it up. It's the two minute 30 mark. Uh, he goes, is it true that people who are adding, who are changing the stock airbox to these colder intakes are losing power? And the guy said, yeah, they are. It's true. And this is from Hall Tech, a Hall Tech employee who does this for a living, dining these cars out in Australia. Uh, and he explains that it has to do with the way the resonator here works in terms of making sure that the speed of the air getting into the uh, intake works. So I was kind of bummed out at the beginning about it because you know this is not a cheap part but again i never did it for the horsepower but i wasn't expecting to lose horsepower i did it to get this air out of here uh, hot air out of here so i i immediately said i'm going to be changed back to stock but <laughs> i went and looked up in the rx8 cup series if you go to youtube and you go to the rx8 cup series this is a, a series out, i think australia where they have basically spec, what, you have, what spec Miata is, but for RX-8s. And I notice if you slow down, if you find, because they don't really, there's no really walkthrough. They just glance over the cars and sometimes you catch a, a glance of what's inside on the engine bay. I noticed that a lot of them, all of them actually, keep the stock resonator section here. And then they add this kind of cold air into section. Now, I don't know what it looks like down here, but I know from here, from the stock resonator section to down here, this is stock, which kind of reemphasizes what the whole tech employee was saying, that if you change that section, you're going to lose power. So what I'm going to be doing is going back to the stock resonator intake section here and then um, keeping this area here. So I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just telling you what I'm going to do based on the stuff that I've seen. Uh, and I will say also that all the Japan Time Attack RX-8s intake, they don't have this 
cold air intake pipe here. They have something very similar to the stock air box. In fact, the RE Amemia, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, is very similar that they all use. They just have basically the stock air box here with the big mouth funnel here that kind of rams the, the cold air here. It's very similar to the Racing B uh, Rev Eye intake box. And remember, those are guys that are competing in time attack, so they all have that. Trust me, I've looked through all the videos I could possibly could. Um, in fact, getting to the point where I'm messaging and using Google Translate with some of these folks. So I'll let you decide what you want to do. Again, I'm not here to debate. I know people do what they want, but that is that. Uh, in terms of why the car is in the quick check, there's nothing wrong with the car right now. Everything works. The reason it's in quick checks is because after 15 years of owning the car and driving and driving it, I feel like I outgrew the stock suspension. I'm not, I'm not one to change parts just because uh, it's cool to have cooler. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. It's just not me. I always felt that I needed to outgrow the suspension and I had to kind of earn the the, 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 the upgrades. That's the, the philosophy that I took. You know, you do what you want. So that's why I have it on the quick jack. Uh, we will be updating the, changing the stock suspension for a pair of Olins over there. Uh, road and track that I got. I have to change them out. The reason why I'm pointing with the, old, with the Olins and not the KWV3 is because the Olins um, have that hybrid performance. Everybody that I talk to, they say they're great on the road, which I use this car also for weekends and sunny drives now. Um, so it's not just a track rack. I generally enjoy driving this car. Uh, so we'll be doing that, uh, making sure that everything is still torqued to spec in terms of the brake calipers, especially since we plan on going to Watkins next, Watkins Glen Park, uh, this upcoming spring or May. Uh, gotta be fixing these oil cooler fins and uh, we'll be going back to the stock resonator intake box here. What else we'll be doing? And just double checking the brake pads, the brake fluid, making sure the exhaust is everything's torqued. And I and that's it. Uh, I'll probably need to get a little hose here to make it you know, spit out in the front here or something, because when you go to the track and expand distance to leak, it just throws the overflow all over here. So we'll probably have to change that here. Um, I did buy an anti-gravity battery to remove this one, uh, significant savings. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I have a pair of Michelin, I have Michelin Pilot 4S that I'm currently using when I go to the track. Not the fastest setup, but again, I go for driver experience and, and not necessarily trying to set fast lap times. Um, just try to do the best that I can with what I got. Again, I'm managing my own expectations. Uh, what else? Uh, we'll see. Inside, I did install the Racing B oil pressure, oil temperature, and water temp gauges. They're in there. Inside is completely stock, just like how I bought it. Nothing's changed aside from those adjustments. Uh, oil coolers, uh, you know the little fins that go right here behind the outlets of the oil coolers. I've seen people who cut these out open to kind of quote unquote get the oil coolers to work more efficiently, it's up to you. But the guys at the RXA Cup Series, which do row racing, they leave those stocks. They leave those stock. And then, um, Maybe it's just making sure that these fins are working properly because over the years they've been uh, banged up. So that's going to be a whole nother project there. Um, I don't plan on pre-mixing when I'm driving normally. I'm just going to switch to 5W30 synthetic. If I go to the track, I will be adding four ounces. We'll see what happens. Car has 111,000 miles on it. Original engine still works. It's still doesn't lose power, doesn't have rough idle, still kicks like nothing's ever happened. I frankly love this car. I bought a 2021 Subaru STI. That's a whole nother thing just because I always wanted it. Uh, why would I buy a 21 STI? Driver feel. I like the way the car feels. I like the way the car sounds. 
Um, I like the visibility. It takes me back to, you know, the early 2000s and, you know, 90s era when things were a lot simpler. I enjoy it. The car that, that 2021 STI has um, 7,000 miles, I think. The only change that I've done to it, it's never been tuned. I would plan on tuning it. Is uh, I did the Cobb titanium exhaust and a pair of Olin's rolling track filler that I installed. Uh, that's the only things I'm gonna do to that car. I'm not changing anything else, except for like wheels, lightweight wheels, because the 19 inch that the STI brings is a whole nother. And if you want me to talk about some of the sounds or how the racing racing beast race exhaust sounds and the resonator sounds, you let me know. I'll make another video. Again, I'm not trying to get a channel. I just thought I'd share. What else? Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. I might be uploading more videos of me just changing things, you know, doing little projects here. I feel like, you know, just show some love to this girl. You know, she's old, but I do prefer driving this car than to the STI. I said it. I'm not saying because I think it's faster. I, I don't think that it's, it's good. You know, you, you're going to get more street credit in this than an STI, you know. But I love the way this car feels. I don't know what it is. When I sit in it, the seating position, when I take a turn, it just feels so balanced. I feel like I know exactly what's going on. Um, and with these Olins, uh, I'm very much looking forward to um, to this year's track, series, track sessions. Uh, let's see. Uh, I will recommend also Rap Potential. He has a... Yeah, uh, that's a cha YouTube channel. Check him out. He beats the life out of his RX-8. And somehow, you know, I'm not surprised. He's not surprised. It still works. Has no issues with it. Um, he's a pretty cool guy. Check him out. Uh, Codrente, Mighty Car Mods, RX-8 Cup Series. We talked about that. Uh, let's see. Commute, Seafoam. I talked about Seafoam Coils. Second Shutter Blau. The crack in the radiator at 60,000 miles. I talked about the overheating issue I, I had at the track. At the time I had that, I didn't have the water temp sensors. Uh, the fuel starvation, I talked about the premix, I talked about modifications, the racing beat exhaust, talked about resonator mid pipe and the plans for this intake. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed. Again, there was no structure to it. Thought I'd share my experience with one in this car for. Man, 15 years. And I will honestly say it's been a great car. I, I'm pretty sure if I kept using it daily, I would never, I would still be racking up miles. The only check engine that ever came up um, was the, the fuel cap. And that one time when I let the car sit um, with, the, with the tank on, with the gas tank on E, again, I'm not sure if that's what because I had that oil settle at the bottom. I've seen it, the guys in Australia did mix the gas and the oil settles at the bottom. Um, so, but I put fuel in it and she worked perfectly fine. Um, and that's it. Basically, 211,000 original engine. If you have any questions, leave in the comments. If you want me to make a video about up changing, about changing the Olins, again, I'm not a YouTuber. Just here to help. If you want me to talk about the how loud the exhaust is with the resonator, with the Racing B resonator, you let me know. And um, yeah, good luck. It's a good car.